My name is Dr. Rick Segill. I'm and action. Hey, uh, Jay, how did you... This is Kirk, you know. And action. Hey, everyone. Nikki had a question about the pitfalls of the fasting mimicking diet, FMD. So if this is the first time you're finding me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the alert button to find out when I do new videos. So this fasting mimicking diet, the five-day fast popularized by Walter Longo, and I've got, because of my enthusiasm, all the all since I helped Pat go through this, I saw great uh, in potential for this kind of treatment. Actually, it's a treatment plan. So great potential for this kind of treatment uh, about a year ago when it started to become popular, but having done it, uh, spectacular. So the, it, it, I mean, it's not fun. It's five days of fasting, and you can see all the details down below. You can do it in a whole food approach like a lot of my patients are doing. Uh, because it is expensive to buy this little box here. The box uh, is uh, retail 250 I think. I'm trying to get it for my patients at cost. Uh, so I, I, I'm sorry, I haven't had uh, success with fixing or finalizing everything, but I will get that online, and I'll have it linked up to my website. So all you have to do is get on the website. I think there's a code or something, and then you'll be able to take advantage of a cheaper rate than what you can find. Uh, my patients are my subscribers only. So the idea about this fasting mimicking diet, Yes, it is awesome. The idea uh, is, is really novel, and it's not like you have to stay with a um, diet for life. I mean, this, I did three cycles, and because of Bonnie, and my friend, giving me that last box, I'll do four cycles. I did the first one as whole food, and the last two has the box, and it is tough as hell. So that's one of my first comments is, on the fifth day, this is the usual protocol, this is the protocol of what you're supposed to do. This is a new print up. And on the third day, kind of tough because you're now three days into calorie restriction. And when you're used to getting a lot of food, if you're not fat adapted and you do have fat, uh, extra adipose tissue, and you're not fat adapted, it's going to be hard to dive into. And most people have their fat here in the tummy. So it's going to be hard to dive into that battery and take energy out because usually it's a one, it's like a savings bond. You only can put energy in. Unless you're fat adapted, then when you lose up or finish up all your glycogen and glucose, your body can automatically switch to metabolism using fat. Uh, but sometimes it's a little bit tough for people that haven't, that have just imbibed in carbohydrates, vegetarians mostly, or standard American diets full of carbohydrates. I think that's, it's not a, we shouldn't vilify carbohydrates. I think they're useful, especially with power movements, uh, explosive movements. Um, but I, I think that society's got to a point where we're really having to fight industry, food industry, because they make the carbohydrates so hidden and so hard to put down and stop that you just have to imbibe more and more and more. It starts this cascade of hormones, and then you've, most people that are tired, overworked, uh, underslept, or stressed out, usually can't stop that uh, crave cycle once the hormone cascade starts. Those of you who are solid, you exercise, you have a, a goal, a vision, an end point, uh, you get great sleep, uh, you have a good body mass index, you probably don't care. But uh, two-thirds of America is overweight. And for that two-thirds, they will go on to disease process later on until some of my colleagues get to put Band-Aids on as far as medicine. So the ultimate idea is, can we change metabolism in an easy way and reverse disease and suffering? And I think there is a possibility. Uh, one of my, uh, one of the, I saw a Facebook comment, somebody said, just tell everybody to stop eating. And that hasn't worked. So uh, again, you're fighting against an industry that knows the psychology of food, knows the psychology of macronutrients, has researched and put millions of dollars into how to get consumers to not want to put down their food. You're fighting against that. And if you're an average Joe and you don't do, you don't have a goal of, uh, I don't know, climbing Mount Everest by 60, if you don't have a goal, it's hard to, and you're just going day by day, trying to get through until the weekend, it's hard to uh, see that far in advance and um, live a very uh, regimented lifestyle every single day and put down the food or pass by the soda or uh, deal with the hunger uh, sounds of your stomach. So it is hard to do that. So I think that in this uh, world of different um, diets, it, it is a refreshing to know that there's an easy one. Now, 
this third round I had was, it kicked my ass by the third day. And that's why I'd suggest that we, if we're trying to not turn on mTOR or PKA, those, those big uh, cascades of damage that bring on disease, and you're trying to turn on stem cell, probably should hold back or decrease your exercise. I think it is important to move, but uh, because of the decreased macronutrient and fuel supply, probably should not push the um, envelope. And I did the one mistake of overindulging the day before I started the FMD and overindulging in exercise. I thought if I kept muscle soreness, I'd be able to get through the five days not wanting to exercise and avoiding the being benched blues. Being benched is not cool when you exercise. And when you don't exercise, it's almost like you get depressed. So uh, I pushed a little harder and I probably ate a little bit too much healthy, but I ate too much and I think that threw me off a little bit. However, this is a trial and error thing. Overall, I feel spectacular, better than before being a vegan, intermittent fasting vegan and a partial keto guy. So I think it's important to cycle. I think this five day routine is important. You just have to cut back on your exercise until the sixth day when you refeed. Sixth to the 16th day refeed, that's when I pour on the exercise again. Not too much damage and be careful. Uh, now the question is if you are already a ultra marathoner or a triathlete or a CrossFit person and can you do that while you're doing the five-day fasting mimicking? I'd probably say no. If you're that level and you take it down a notch and just walk uh, or do isometrics, I think that's fair, but I think you should turn it down just for those five days. Meditation, maybe. Uh, so uh, the other thing is uh, that, again, I would not front load the uh, anticipating starvation. I would not front load the day before or the weekend before. Uh, with excessive amounts of indulgence, uh, just because you think it's going to be a tough five days. I would also, afterward, afterload properly. And I have videos on what to do from the 6th to the 16th day, which I think is where the magic happens. Uh, I haven't done anything as far as a video on what to do prior, but uh, I have had an a unboxing of uh, keto. This is one of the keto uh, 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 capsules that I'm using now. I think the, f the second round, I got really deep into ketosis with a beta hydroxybutyrate level of like 4.4. That's really good. Uh, essentially part starvation, part ketosis probably. Uh, I'm going to try to hit this again. And there is uh, some advantage to being a keto practitioner or a, a nutritional ketosis uh, adapt fat adapted person. But um, I just found that doing a keto in the long run is, it was a little tough for my irritable bowel syndrome. So I just think that tasting keto a little bit and having the body kind of respond every once in a while will get you somewhat fat adapted, what they called it, so that when the time comes for starvation, your body will be able to switch over without a hitch, thus decreasing on the third, fourth day, decreasing that fatigue issue. So this is, and I've done unboxings on this before, this is the keto capsule, not so bad. I'm going to take two today probably two twice a day, just to try to maintain a little bit of ketosis. Uh, again, to be adapted to that gives every cell in your body, especially muscle and brain, the opportunity to just dive into fat when you don't take enough uh, um, calories as far as carbohydrate sources, fuel sources. I think it's important. Uh, it's not that expensive. So that, in a nutshell, is it. I would say uh, behave yourself and find your nutrition practice you're going to maintain between the uh, cycles of FMD. Whether it's once every month, which if you can afford it or if you can manipulate it and you can get through the five days, fine. Or at least twice a year if you're pretty healthy, lean, uh, low body mass index and then exercising. Twice a year I think is enough to shock the system, just like Ayurveda. Uh, but there is no harm in doing it every single month if you wanted to. It's kind of fun. Until you get to your, uh, till you change your category of disease state from severe to moderate, from moderate to mild, from mild to pre-diabetes or pre-hypertensive. A pre heart attack to zero, meaning you're normal, like everybody else. Uh, and again, I mentioned two thirds of America is overweight. That means they carry not only extra weight, but probably early menopause, andropause, uh, cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure. But one third of America is good weight. That's a BMI of 23, maybe max 25. And that's where uh, the health is, the healthy window is supposed to be. So it's, it's more than just BMI. It's a whole bunch of other things with regards to the lifestyle. But if you just move yourself into a different category, it'll be very... Uh, oh, the other thing is it's fast. So not only will moving into a different category of disease uh, or for disease-free be empowering to your next decade, uh, to your next challenge, but uh, it also 
uh, it frees up a lot of stress from disease, suffering from disease. And when you have that, less uh, stress at night, better, deeper sleep. You can accelerate the uh, repair of the body and essentially rejuvenate. I think that's why Walter Longo uh, likes to use uh, rejuvenation as an option. When you give enough of the body cells uh, their, the, what they want, the stimulation they need, they should be able to fix themselves and then that would dovetail into the blue zones. If you can be to become one of the blue zone uh, people uh, living to 100 but being very independent and doing your own work, going and having a great family in life, that'd be great. Uh, being 60 and isolated in a wheelchair, not so good. So I think those are extremes, but those are the options that will keep you on track. So I'll see you at the next, oh, no, don't forget to subscribe to me. And put your comments down below about what, how you felt the FMD was to you, what your pitfalls were, what your successes were. Mm -hmm.